the 39th annual Thurman Munson Award Ceremony, which benefits the AHRC New York City Foundation, which assists children and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities, as well as paying homage to the late, great Yankee captain and catcher Thurman Munson. Thurman Munson played for the New York Yankees from 1969 to 1979. He was the captain and catcher, but his life was tragically taken when his private plane crashed while he was practicing takeoffs and landings at the Akron Canton Airport. Since then, his widow, Diana Munson, keeps his legacy alive through this event. I'm John Cirillo, and on a um, beautiful spring afternoon in February, welcome to the uh, press conference for the 39th annual Thurman Munson Awards Dinner, which benefits AHRC New York City Foundation for all 39 years. And uh, in the history of the dinner, more than $16 million has been raised uh, to assist children and adults with disabilities. And this has been a marvelous experience personally in my life, um, having handled the dinner for 20 years, half of the uh, Thurman Munson Awards. So, to get started, we are going to introduce um, a lady who has helped to drive uh, the fundraising in memory of her great husband, Thurman Munson. So my pleasure to once again introduce Diana Munson for a few words. Diana. Good evening. I'm so overjoyed to be back here. 39 years, when they told me it would last for two or three years because it's built on sentiment. And I'm pretty sure that Thurman Munson is amazed right now and shaking his head going, this squatty little catcher from Ohio still draws a crowd. And I'm so grateful. Um, AHRC has come to mean a lot to me. On Friday, I got to tour some of these sites, uh, the workshops, the classrooms, the young children, the adults. I got to see dancing, uh, music, uh, basket weaving, painting, and I saw the joy in everyone's face, and I saw how excited they were that I was there to support them. So coming here and knowing that we not only remembering my husband, which means a great deal to me, still choked up after 39 years, he really did have an effect on me, but to know that we are doing wonderful things for all of these people and all of the adults, all of the children, all of the camps, the workshops, the residents, and to see it in person was a really emotional time. So I thank you for supporting this. You know, the press was not always Thurman's friend, and I like to think that they really believe in him now and realize that he was the most unusual person I've ever met. And I thank you for supporting this dinner. Thank you. Um, what a foundation and what great works. Um, the who's who of athletes who have been honored over the years and Diana have supported it in such a great way. Um, many of the younger guys and ladies ha weren't even born when Thurman was playing. That's how amazing it is. Like Diana said, people told her when it first started that it might last three or four years. Um, my pleasure to introduce now the chief executive officer of AHRC New York City Foundation, Marco Damiani. Marco. Thank you, John, and thank you, Diana. Um, the stars are aligning tonight in more ways than one, it seems. And uh, we're really, really proud to have you here to help us support uh, kids and adults with disabilities now for 39 years. We have uh, 5,000 staff and support over 15,000 people every year. And we couldn't do it without you. You give us a voice, you give us money, we'll take that. Uh, but you also give us an opportunity to tell our story. And we can't thank you enough for that. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much for devoting so many years to supporting us. And we look forward to a great evening. Thanks. Two of our uh, five honorees are here tonight, so um, first I want to call up uh, what a great memory of tw uh, 2003 when that shot, uh, another shot heard around the world and vaulted the Yankees to uh, the World Series in Game 7 against the Boston Red Sox. It's a, a vivid memory. And now the manager of the New York Yankees, 100 wins last year, and I think on the way to very big things um, this season, and a great guy, Aaron Boone. Aaron. Uh, 
Uh, good evening. It's great. It's great being here. Um, anytime you hear the name Thurman Munson, for me as a born in 1973, um, you know my dad a catcher, playing for the Phillies. Obviously, in those days, Thurman Munson was such a big deal in the American League and um, helping lead the Yankees to championships. And now to see um, the legacy he left and and the giant that he is within the walls of Yankee Stadium still to this day uh, for an organization as steeped in, in history as it is. Um, it's a real honor to be here tonight. And um, just in reading about your organization, um, it's always awesome when I see organizations that empower people. And, and it's one thing to, to help, but it's another thing to and to see these people going out and being contributing to society the way they do, that's the neat part of it. And uh, it's, a, it's a privilege for me to be here tonight. Thank you. Yeah. We're, um, it's interesting that um, Aaron is a third generation um, baseball player. His grandfather and uh, dad, as you know, uh, played in the major leagues. and. Uh, one of our honorees uh, has a great family tradition in football. Uh, Zach Diossi, who's receiving the Munson Award uh, tonight, uh, his father Steve played for the Giants as well, and it's the only father-son combination to win a Super Bowl for the same franchise. So that's an amazing feat. So welcome, Zach Diossi. Thanks, John. Hello, everybody. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Diana Munson for, uh, for having us tonight and doing such a good job and, and continuing in the legacy of uh, the late and great Thurman Munson. Uh, I've been around the NFL for a long time, and it's great to see the local athletes of, of New York and all around the country stepping up and supporting their local communities. I think it's paramount that we put ourselves out there and do whatever we can to help organizations like AHRC doing such a great job of connecting us and also going out there in community and taking care of those in dire need. So thank you to HRC and my old man's coming tonight, which is exciting. Um, we just spent some time down at the Super Bowl. Um, he played 12 years in the NFL, so it's always nice to spend some time with him and hear about his old glory days. And at the same time, I just finished my 12th year in the NFL and trying to get one more to beat the old man. So <laughs> fingers crossed for uh, one more year. But um, again, uh, thank you so much, Sean, for having me. And uh, look forward to a, a wonderful evening. With us, Diana Munson, and this is the Thurman uh, Munson Awards. 39 years later, tell me about this day. It's just overwhelming. I'm so happy and proud that after 39 years, that people still love and admire and Thurman's memory and the respect that is shown to him, but more importantly, the wonderful works. You know, we've raised over $16 million for AHRC, and I'm so proud of that. So it's honoring Thurman and it's giving back in a wonderful way that I think he would be really proud of. And you did mention um, earlier in the press conference that you visited uh, the area. And, 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 and tell us a little bit about, about some of the programs uh, that the AHRC is developing. Well, on Friday, I got to go to uh, one of the schools and I got to see some workshops where they were painting and they were singing and they put on plays. And I got to see the little children and the adults and the the thing that was amazing about both is the joy on their faces. They were so proud and they were so anxious to show me how far they'd come and what they could do. And it was so touching that it was really, well, most of the time I was okay, but there was a time that I just got choked up because it feels so good to know that we're doing some small part in helping their lives. Once again, this is a Thurman Munson Awards. This is a 39th uh, year, and hopefully there'll be a 40th. We can only hope. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> With this Zach Diossi, New York Giants. Look at, I saw that beautiful ring. Yeah, brought the hardware out tonight. Oh, yeah. Dusted it off. Yeah, what year? 
2011. 2011? Yes. And, and tell me a little bit about the Giants and, and what you're expecting next year. You said you're going for maybe one more year or at least one more year? Yeah, uh, I'm a 12-year long snapper. Just finished my 12th year and... Uh, you know, we haven't achieved what we wanted the past two years, so we're expecting big things next year. Um, we have some new additions to the locker room and uh, some, young t some young blood, as they say, and, and we're excited for what the future holds. Um, you know, we just watched the team up north win, and we're a little green with envy, and we're ready to rock and roll this offseason and get it started. Talking about that team up north, aren't you from that area? I am yeah. from North Andover, Massachusetts. Yes. And, and and what do you think about Tom Brady? I mean, he's that's really quite impressive, don't you think? Is for a man to to it's, win that many times? It's very impressive. Um, uh, you can't take anything away from it. He's done it. So, uh, tip of the cap. Yeah, I, I, you know, I hate to say I was sort of rooting for him just because, you know, when, on those playoffs when he made that drive yeah. straight down. I yeah. mean, there's something about being able to really complete the job. Yeah, there is. And, uh, you know, I was watching the game hoping for a 0-0 tie, but uh, that's not how it works in the Super Bowl. But, uh, yeah, the, the whole team, the Patriots executed well, and, and they came out on top. And you're from a line of uh, football. Your father, your father's also. Yeah. Would you want to say a few words about, yeah, about your father's, dad? My father, Steve, uh, started his NFL career out of BC. From Then he went to uh, Dallas, played 12 years, had four years with the Giants, and he won a Super Bowl as well, um, which is pretty awesome because that makes us the only father-son combination to win a Super Bowl for the same franchise. So we're real proud of that. And uh, and uh, my old man's my hero, and, and we have a lot of stories to share, so it's fun. And all the teenagers, for all the teenagers out there watching right now, any advice? Uh, you know, football's always a big sport. Yeah, football's a big sport. First advice is uh, get those grades up, okay? And football is a tough sport to get it going in, but my other tidbit of advice is learn how to long snap. Offenses and defenses change, but every team needs a long snapper, and no one's willing to do it, so might as well give it a go. And just to end, we're at the Thurman Munson Award Ceremony here in New York City. Could you tell me a little bit about Thurman Munson and, and this opportunity tonight to receive an award? Sure. I mean, the, the Thurman Munson's uh, legacy resonates uh, profoundly in, in uh, the New York uh, and its roots in the New York City uh, metropolitan area. And, uh, you know, I'm humbled to, to, to receive this award uh, with these distinguished uh, honorees and, and you know, I think it's very important to put yourself out there as an athlete and immerse yourself in the community like uh, the late and great Thurman Munson uh, did. And uh, uh, his legacy continues on, and, and we can all learn something from what he accomplished here in New York um, on and off the field. Well, thank you. And, hey, go Giants. Go Giants. Oh, yeah, we're going to get them. We're going to get them. That camera guy right there is the biggest Boston fan you ever want to see. I told uh, him, don't wear no Boston. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's all We're going to get them next year. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank With this Ed Crane poll, 1969 Mets, that's your one of the great years. Would you uh, give a little history about that year and your uh, uh, position? Well, I played first base on a championship team, and it was a great time in New York, and it was a great time for the Met organization. First time we ever won, and we had a good time, and we can still be here 50 years after the fact celebrating. <laughs> and you hit, uh, didn't you hit a couple uh, saving um, runs in there? Well, I had a home run in the World Series, oh. and we played as a team. We won as a team, you lose as a team, and we had a great organization, and we had a lot of fun. And I'm lucky to be here tonight, uh, and some of my teammates are still here, so that's great. Yes, this is the Thurman Munson uh, Award Ceremony. Tell me a little bit about this uh, Thurman, and, or a little bit about this award ceremony. Well, I knew Thurman when he was a player, obviously, uh, in the early years, and we lost him too young in his life. Uh, but it's a great organization. They've done a lot of good things for a lot of people over the years. Uh, Diane has kept this event going, and I tell you, it's always a pleasure to be part of it. Well, and hey, do you have any advice to any of the teenagers out there? Well, They're going for baseball. I just think that it's a great sport, and they just sort of go out there and work hard, and hopefully they get an opportunity to play in the major leagues. Well, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. A rookie of the year. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Oh, de verdad me sentí muy bien de la gran temporada que tuve. La disfruté al máximo, aprendí mucho y nada, este, ready para este año. 
I felt great with the season that I had. I really worked hard in order to be able to have that type of season, and I got a lot of help from uh, from the team. So, super excited about 2019 now. Yeah, what are your ex expectations for 19? Oh, que todo nos mantengamos nos mantengamos saludable como equipo y ganar mucho partido y tratar de ir a una serie mundial este año si Dios quiere. First and foremost, for the whole team to be healthy. Secondly, to win a lot of games, and third, to be in the World Series. And do you have any advice for all the teenagers? I know my nephews are all starting baseball, uh, about playing baseball. Oh, claro, que primero que siempre se lleven los consejos de su padre y que siempre nunca crean que su sueño está lejos y se trabaja fuerte. Well, first, of, first, listen to your parents. They know best. And secondly, to never think that your dreams are that far off. If you really work for them, you can achieve them. Well, good luck. Thank you. Good Thank luck. You. Go Yankees. Thank you. Yeah, really. <laughs> Thank you. You know, we'll, we'll uh, address our club here in the next couple of weeks. And, and when you're looking around that room, um, you always know you're going to need more than 25 guys. You always need, know you're probably going to need more than 12 or 13 pitchers over the course of the year. Um, we feel like um, within our organization we have the depth to be able to cover that. Now obviously we need to stay relatively healthy. It's inevitable that guys are going to go down here and there. But if we can remain relatively healthy um, with the starters that we have, um, it, we think it's a special group. Aaron Judge said that he was willing to move to center field if you guys signed <laughs> Bryce Harper. How, how do you feel when you hear that? Uh, I don't think that was just Judgey having some fun at the Super Bowl. Um, Judgey would do a lot of things for the team, but uh, um, I don't know. I, I think that was just a probably pressed in the corner at the Super Bowl, and he gave a he gave a good answer, but. Uh, I don't. Th I don't think we're gonna have to worry about that. I mean, you, you wouldn't consider it. I wouldn't consider yeah, that's like moving him in to center. Um, that's well. I don't. I don't think that scenario is a, a realistic one for one, for us at this point. Do you want Bryce Harper? Do I? <laughs> I want everybody. You know, I'm, uh, obviously he's a great player, but you know, I think. It, you know, our team is pretty much set. Obviously, things happen that, uh, you know, force Brian and, and, and his staff to pivot on certain things. But I think, uh, I think it's safe to assume that we're, we're, where, we're, we're going to spring training with the team that, that we expect to have. So, Aaron, is it your understanding then that there won't be any further pursuit of either Harper or Machado? <coughs> I mean, that, that's a question for Brian. I mean, y you never say never with, with anything, but I would also say we're anticipating that um, we have a great team right now and, and feel like uh, we have a complete team that's, that's ready to go compete for a championship. Does it surprise you that neither one has landed with an organization yet? Um, yeah, maybe a little bit. Um, uh, you know, I guess if you would have asked me to start, I, I probably would have thought they – they had landed at some point before now, but um, you never know the twists and turn that an offseason takes. And, and some teams, sometimes it's about having the right clubs in on, on certain things. And, um, you know, so I guess I'm a little bit surprised, but, but you never know how these winners unfold and where the market goes and what teams are involved and what, what players are actually looking for. You know, those are all a lot of times personal things that, uh, we don't always account for. Are you surprised by the lack of movement in Boston by the Red Sox? Um, not really. I mean, you know, I, I think their payroll was one pretty far up there, and, and obviously, you know, the way the luxury tax works and the penalties that exist, and especially when you start uh, really going up high, you know, uh, I I'm not really surprised, especially when you have a great core of players that they certainly have and, and know that are going to come due in some some regard. But um, they made a pretty big splash with Evaldi there early and bringing back the World Series MVP. So they've done some things, but but I think um, you know considering the core of players they have that are probably coming due, I don't think it's a huge surprise. At what point did you know the Yankees were going to go back above the luxury tax with the moves you made this winter? Um, I guess when we finally went over.
because there's never, you know, with us, never that necessarily that mandate, no, we're not doing this. It's always, you know, where, where the winner, where the market, where our needs take us. And, and I think Steinbrenner family's always shown a willingness to give us the best opportunity to be a great club, and we feel like we have a chance to be that right now. And since we last talked to you, what do Adovino and LeMahieu give to you that you didn't have before? Well, I think with Adovino, um, obviously he's a dynamic reliever, a back-end reliever with great stuff, but I think he gives us a little bit of a different look, too. Um, you know, with, with Dellen, with Green, um, despite being right-handed, they're actually both better again lefties out. Same with Robertson last year, more of a lefty assess. I think Adovino gives us that high leverage reliever that's a kind of a righty assassin too. Not that he can't get lefties out because he's shown that as well, but um, I think he gives, he allows us to have some really different and unique looks within our pen when you when you think about Chappie at the back end, Dellen what he brings, Britton with a sinker ball, you know, Ottavino with that wipeout slider from the right side, Greeny with his ability to pitch up in the zone, especially the left-handed hitters. We have a lot of different looks from, from a lot of really good pitchers. Are you satisfied that front office and ownership has done enough to close the gap between you guys and the Red Sox? Yeah, I think we're, we have a chance to be a great club, and that's all you can ask for. And I think it's hard to deny. You know, I mean, you look at the winner we've had and where we've shored up in areas. You know, I thought Cash going out and making the trade early in the winter for Paxton um, was a really good move and allowed us to be patient and kind of rebuilding our staff a little bit. Um, I really love the depth that we've been able to add and uh, feel like in a lot of ways we're a complete team right now and have a chance uh, to go out and do something special, which we get to start next week. Tell us a little bit about that infield depth and what's your plan headed into the spring uh, when fans maybe see Torres at shortstop, where right. we move from Mayhew. Well, um, obviously we have Troy Tulowitzki. Um, he's healthy. Um, but even, you know, best case scenario with Troy, um, having not really been on the field for – a year and a half, um, you know, he's going to need days off. And so we feel like in those situations, Glaber will be able to slide over to short. That gets LeMahieu. It allows us to really have kind of a 10, 11-man rotation for nine spots. Um, so it, it, it keeps, we believe, everyone playing regularly, but also keep being able to keep guys fresh, hopefully more healthy over the long haul. And, and having a guy or two on the bench every night that's a really good player. Sanchez, while well, he's been working out in Tampa, hasn't taken on-field batting practice. Is he under any restrictions now or at the beginning of the spring? He's getting real close. Actually, I think he, he hit he hit in the cage, though, off, uh, you know, pitch batting practice yeah. in the cage today. So um, I, he'll, he'll be hitting on the field probably when we start. I may, we may slow play him a little bit the first week of of, of uh, Grapefruit League games, but no, he's he's doing really well. In fact, the report I just got today was uh, feeling is feeling really well. And what's so, your latest DD report on? I'm trying to guess when he's back. So DD um, had his checkup, I believe Monday or yesterday, and everything's going well, going as according to plan. Um, but we're going to listen to the injury. So whether that's you know a couple more months, whether that's uh, you know, when it is, it'll be. Um, but it's going according to plan. It's healing properly. I know he's getting ready to start his throwing program when he leaves here and goes back down to Tampa. He was cleared for that. So um, everything's moving in the right direction. And, and obviously, what you know about Didi, he's going to do everything he can to be ready. And He's just one of those tough, grinded-out players that, uh, you know, I tend to bet on him being ready a little sooner than later. What's your comfort level about the job as opposed to a year ago today? Um, obviously, I'm way more familiar with everything to do with our organization, with our team. Um, you know, from my relationship for, with, with, with Cash and the front office, who everybody is, what everybody's role is, how to best utilize them, where to go for if I need this answered, all the way down to the relationships I have now with our players, with our coaches, staff members, people behind the scenes. Um, hopefully, and, and getting to spend a winter here of 
kind of brainstorming and, and talking through ideas and things that we want to be able to implement. Um, you know, hopefully we're a finely tuned machine more so than we were a year ago. Hi, the Thurman Munson Awards honor achievements on the field and off the field. So tell us about our participation with the Yankees. Hopefully, oh, that that's one of the it's one of the great weeks of the year and something that um, makes you feel proud to be a part of. And it's really cool that the Yankees have taken up that initiative and to see, you know, one of the things I, one of the things with Dee Dee being here tonight. Um, we, we were paired up together last year, um, and to see him out in the community, to see him, um, the way he's able to interact, the kind of effect he has on children, adults alike, um, was one of the highlights of the year for me to see him and the way he is with, with, with people in the community. Thank you. You said you were into the history. Um, mm. Tell, tell the audience a little bit about that uh, Funa Bino uh, uh, curse. The, oh, uh, that's over with now. The, the, the Red Sox have uh, uh, won a lot of championships uh, since then. But um, just I think one of the really cool things about being a Yankee um, is to be able to be a part of the rivalry that is between the Red Sox and the Yankees. And to be able to play in those games, now manage in those games, is is uh, is, is special and something you don't take lightly. And lastly, for the youth of today, that are all, you know, they're all getting, I don't know, my nephews are all getting ready for baseball and, mm -hmm. and going to schools. Uh, do you have any advice or, or any little tips to all those youngsters out there? Um, Make sure you're having the time of your life when you're out there playing ball with your buddies. And that's something, that's one of the messages I deliver to my players, even even at this level. You know, there's a lot at stake, there's a lot on the line, but uh, it's important to remember that this game was designed for us to have fun at, and, and that's an important thing to not get lost. More for the parents. <laughs> And I'm Crystal Hart reporting on the Thurman Munson Award Ceremony here in Midtown New York City. Hope you've enjoyed the show and thanks for watching.